Hi, today we're going to be looking at the typecasting lab with app development with SwiftBook. Um, so let's get started. Create a collection of type any, including a few doubles, integers, strings, and booleans within the collection. Print the contents of the collection. That's easy enough. Let all types of collection uh, be of type any. And we're going to give it some values. Let's give it a value of four. Let's give it a boolean here, true. Let's give it a string maybe. Let's put my name for the sake of logic. Let's give it a three. Let's give it a 4.22. Let's give it a false. So that's an int double boolean. Let's, I don't know, let's give it another int. Uh, let's give it um, another double 55. No, I like 59.88 much better. And I think that's it. Now let's give it one more string, something, whatever, right? And let's go ahead and print this. Like they said, all types of collections. And if I run this, it should print. It printed it. Awesome. All right, loop through a collection for each uh, integer. Print the integer has a value of followed by the integer value. Repeat the steps for double strings and booleans. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write the loop here and I'll come back and I'll explain what I did, okay? Okay, let's have a look at what I did here and let's go ahead and... Um, uh, let me go ahead and explain it here. So essentially, I iterated through all types of collection. This is a um, an array of type any, and I'm and I go in and I have a simple if statement here. I go um, I do an if let. So I go go ahead and create this constant called a bool if the item is of type bool. And if the item is of type bool, go ahead and print the boolean value is item. Item will be uh, so if the item is of type bool, it'll be placed in a bool. So it'll go ahead and read it as a bool. Uh, else if, let a double item as double. If if this works, then go ahead and print the double item. Go ahead and print the uh, int item and go ahead and print the string item. Cool. So if I actually um, go ahead and run this, let's see what happens here. So that was my first thing up here and it iterated through the end value is four because the first value was uh, a four the boolean value is true it recognized that for sake logic is uh, a string this is an end this is a double this is a boolean this is an end this is a double this is a string and it printed all of them pretty easy right awesome all right let's move on create a string any dictionary so we're creating a dictionary with a key of string and the value is any where the values are a mixture of doubles, integers, strings, and booleans. Print the key value uh, pairs with the collection. Okay, how do we go about doing something like that? Okay, so that's pretty easy, actually. It's just like what we did up here, except instead of doing an array, we're going to create a, uh, a dictionary. So let my, my dictionary be of type... Well, the key is going to be string and the value is going to be any. Cool. And we're going to give it some values. So the first key is going to be a boolean and I'm going to give it a value of true. The second value in this, the second element in this, um, in this, hold on, let me fix this. In this dictionary is going to be, and I'm going to give it a second, uh, a second uh, bool. And we're going to give it false. Uh, we're going to give it a third element um, and int. And this is going to be, um, I don't know, 99 is good. Let's go ahead. Let's give it a double now. A, a double. A double. And we're going to give it a value of 23.7, let's say. And we're going to give it a string here, a string, um, and obviously my favorite type of strings are for the sake of logic. Okay, and let's give it a third boolean, why not? And this one's going to be false. All right, I think that's enough. 
okay and we're gonna go ahead and print my dictionary and if i go ahead and print it it'll print it right here at the bottom fantastic okay create a variable uh, total of type double set to zero okay so let's go ahead and do that real quick uh, var total of type double and we're going to give it a value of zero then loop through then loop through the dictionary and add the value of each integer and double to your variables value for each string value add one to the total for each boolean add two if it's true and um, subtract three if it's false print the value of total okay so we're going to have to do a relatively big uh, for loop i'm going to write it and i'll come back and explain it okay All right, let's have a look at what I did here. So this is a pretty, um, actually a pretty simple for loop with a relatively ugly looking if statement. Um, so let's go check it out. So I created a for loop that iterates through essentially a key and a value. And the key and the value are, I left this blank uh, because I'm gonna iterate through it. And this is the value. Um, in my dictionary. So I'm essentially iterating through this. So the reason I needed two values here is because a dictionary has essentially, not two values, but a key and a value. That's why you see there's two things here. Um, so I start with the booleans because that was a little uh, iffy because here there's a condition inside a condition that if it's a boolean and if it's true, you get two. If it's false, you get three. So essentially if I said, um, if uh, let my value equal value as boolean, and if my value is a bool, then Go ahead and check my value if my value is true then give it a two else that means it's false make it negative three uh, subtract three else if let my value two is a double um so if value is a double put in my value two and and my value two add it to the total if else uh, else if let uh, my value uh, three so if value is an int put in my value three and take my value three convert it to double and add it to total else if let my value four um, uh, my value four, if it's a value of string, put in my value four and go ahead and just add one because here it says it doesn't matter regardless of the string, you just simply add one, um, right? Right here for each string, add one. So if I go ahead and, um, what do I do here? I guess I print total and it should give me a number here and the number is 119.7. If I go ahead and do the additions here, so let's have a look. 99 plus 23.7 is 122.7. 122.7 uh, plus 2, because this is true, is 120.7. But this is, uh, sorry, plus 2. Uh, uh, sorry. So 122 plus 2 is 124. Minus 1 is 121. Plus 1 is 122. Minus 3 is 119.7. Exactly as is. All right. That worked. Not too shabby. All right, we're almost done here. Uh, create a variable total two of type double set to zero. Loop through the collection again, adding up all the integers and doubles for each string that you uh, come across during the loop. Attempt to convert the string into a number and add the value to the total. Ignore booleans, thank you. <laughs> Print the total. So uh, I'm gonna try to convert some strings here. I don't have any strings that actually um, have a number, so I'm going to go ahead and change for the sake of logic to 99. All right, and let's go ahead and write this. I'm going to write the loop and I'll come back, okay? All right, let's see what I did here. Um, so essentially, um, I'm iterating through just like before. I created a total 2. And I'm doing the same thing here. I said if boolean, uh, if value is boolean, then continue. So essentially ignoring the boolean, I go in. Uh, else if value two is double, go ahead and uh, take total two and add uh, whatever my value two is because it's a double. Same with int. Of course, I have to convert it to a double though because this is of type double. But for string, I said listen. Um, if it's a string, put in my value four, and then let numeric value is um, double my value four. Because it's gonna be in value four, I'm converting my value four to a double and creating another constant called numeric value, and then taking numeric value and adding it. So if I 
uh, if I press print here, total two, remember we got 119 here. Well, we're gonna get something different, totally different, because we ignored the we ignored the um, uh, boolean value. So we got 221. Let's see if, if that's correct here. Uh, so ignore, ignore, 99 plus 23 is 122. 122 plus 99 is, 100, uh, is 221. Point 0.7. That's the point 0.7. That's perfect. That worked out. All right. Awesome. Let's move on to page number two. Okay. Page number two. Um, your fitness tracking app may allow users to track different kinds of workout. When arch uh, architecting the app, you may decide to have a workout base class for which other types of workout classes inherit. Below are three classes. Workout is the base class with time and distance properties and run and swim are subclasses that add more specific properties to the workout class. Also, uh, also provided is a workout array that represents the log of past workout. You'll use these classes and the array for the exercise below. So we've got a class here of type workout, it's got two properties, uh, time and distance, initialized, and we've got a class run, which inherits from workout, which this thing right here, so inherits everything here, plus it has another thing called cadence, a cadence, and a class swim also inherits from workout, so has all of this, Plus has another thing called stroke, and we've got a variable. Uh, we've got an array here of um, an array of objects, essentially array of workout objects. So this is a class. So they created uh, two, four, five objects from workout, and it's a run, swim, 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 run. Okay, let's see what they have us do here. Write a simple function called describe run, running workout, and um, and describe swims, and that takes parameters. Um, that takes a parameter, I guess, of object swim, um, swimming workout, that, that I guess the label is swimming workout, that's how I would read that, uh, that take a run object, yes, like I said, and a swim object, respectively. Neither should return values, each function should print a description of the workout, including the run's cadence or the swim's stroke, time is represented in seconds, distance is represented in meters, and cadence is represented in steps per minute. Uh, so, okay, so this is pretty easy, I just have to, like, do a description so describe run and I'm gonna call this my run uh, yeah I'm gonna call it my run I don't like calling it running workout and swimming workout I'm a rebel like that you know I don't follow instructions um, so my run and it's off uh, it's gonna take an, an object run and we're gonna say print what are we gonna print? You finished a run this far, and we're gonna give you the distance here. So my run dot distance um, in this much time. So um, we're gonna go my run dot time and your cadence was. We're gonna go my run dot cadence all right pretty easy um and i guess we have to create another function called funk funk describe swim and i'm gonna call this my swim and i'll take an object of type swim and we're gonna print we're gonna print you finished a swim with this many strokes uh, swim dots uh, my swim dot stroke uh, for this distance uh, my swim dot distance um, and this is how long it took you and we're gonna go with my swim dot time all right perfect so those are the two workouts i assume they're going to have me use these functions here now loop through each workout in workout and using typecasting call either describe run or describe swim for each observe what is printed in the console all right that's pretty easy so for some workout in workouts that's the array let's go ahead and say if let a, a run so if it's um, so this is if some workout happens to be of type running 
of type object run then um, what are we gonna do here we're gonna say describe run and we're gonna say a run right so we're gonna call up that function else if let a swim type some workout as swim we're gonna say describe swim and we're gonna give it a swim okay so if I go ahead and run this it prints out five lines and if we go up here the first is a run swim 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 run which you know obviously follows through here and it gives me the details of these little workouts um, so I use typecasting essentially with a simple if statement I'm saying listen if it's of object run then call up this function if it's object swim then call up this function so it goes and checks every single element in this um, array cool and that's pretty much it for this lab hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, have a wonderful day goodbye